Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, testing your steel. Now, I'm constantly getting emails from people asking what the best steel is. The fact is, there's no such thing. There are always trade-offs depending on what application you have in mind. Do you want toughness? Do you want hardness? All those things play against each other. Add to that, sometimes you get a steel that you don't know much about or that's an unknown quantity for some reason, and you may have to do extensive testing to figure out if the steel that you're going to be using will actually be of use to you. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. Testing to find out what heat treatment will work for the steel you're looking to use. Now, if you read metallurgy textbooks, they'll tell you that such and such a steel heat treated in such and such a way yields such and such results. Fair enough. But industrial metallurgists conduct tests under very precise conditions on geometrical sections that don't necessarily resemble knives. So when the rubber meets the road, every knife maker has to experiment at least a little to see what the actual results of a particular steel will yield using their equipment their blade designs, and their techniques. Add to that, sometimes you'll get your hands on a steel that's somewhat unusual or that's somewhat of an unknown quantity for some reason, and you have to do extensive experimentation to figure out whether the steel is going to be any use to you. So, that's what we're aiming to do here. Before we say anything else, though, just a super quick aside about metallurgy. Steel is not just steel. The physical properties of any particular steel, hardness, toughness, flexibility, tensile strength, compressive strength, and so on, can vary dramatically depending on how they're heated and cooled prior to use. Now, these cycles of heating and cooling are collectively referred to as heat treating. There are a number of heat treating processes, including annealing, hardening, tempering, stress relieving, cryo quenching, and normalizing. And all of these can have profound effects on the performance of a knife. The possible permutations and combinations for any given steel are literally limitless. So, let's say somebody hands you a steel that you haven't used before, and you want to see what you can do with it. How do you go about figuring out how to heat treat it so as to get the kind of knife that you want? Well, as it happens, I just bought a new steel known as 80CRV2, also known as L2. Let's start by looking up the technical specs. To my eye, the published technical specs for L2 are so broad as to be almost useless. The published specs have a carbon range that can vary by 0.4% which is huge, and there is very little heat treating data available out there about this steel. So, you're kind of on your own with this stuff. The specific piece that I have could basically be described as 1080, 0.8% carbon, and 0.35% manganese, plus 0.5% chromium, plus 0.3% silicon, plus 0.2% vanadium, plus a tiny pinch of nickel and molybdenum, which is to say, it's not 1080 at all. It's semi-close to L6, semi-close to 5160, semi-close to 1080, but not close enough to any of those that it would really be predictive of what this stuff's capable of. So, let's run a test and see what happens. So, before we start to do the testing, what can we test for? Given a certain heat treating regimen, and that's the key, given a certain heat treating regimen, here are some things we can try to find out. Does it harden? Does it harden fully? And that's not always the same thing. Does it appear to have good edge holding qualities? What sort of grain does it have? How strong is it? How tough is it? How hard is it? Well, I'm not going to answer all those questions, and definitely not with scientific precision, but I can answer some of those questions well enough to get a general sense of what this steel can do. And that's what we're really talking about here is slowly refining your processes so that over time you get exactly where you want to go. Here's how. I'll forge a blade that resembles the typical geometry of blades I might make. 
Here's the key point about what we're doing. This is just a dummy blade. See, a lot of times beginning knife makers will make really complicated blades out of a material they don't really understand, then put all kinds of effort into making handles and bolsters and sheaths and all kinds of stuff, and then they end up with a really pretty paperweight. Now, in this case, I know that when I'm done, this blade will end up in a pile of rusting scrap metal, so I'm not going to squander any sweat or heartbreak on making it pretty. It's not a knife. It's just a metallurgical test bed, pure and simple, and if things don't go well, I don't care. I've learned something. So, I'm going to start knowing roughly how I'd heat treat 1080, but I also know that the added alloying elements present will probably make it more through hardening. So, if this were 1080, I'd probably start by water quenching it, but I'll predict that it'll still harden in the slower quenching medium of oil. So, what I'm going to do is try for a sort of simplistic baseline just to see what I can get with what you might call a kind of tool room type heat treat. I'm not even normalizing or annealing it. I'm just taking it straight from the mill, grinding it, heating it to 1500 Fahrenheit, soaking for five minutes or so, and quenching into canola oil. Boom. Done. So, what we're trying to find out now is if this is even in the right ballpark. So, test number one, file test. If the file bites into the steel, it didn't harden, and you know that this heat treating approach is a dead end and I'm going to have to try something very different. If the file skates over the steel, on the other hand, and doesn't dig in, then our test blade hardened. So, it appears to have hardened. So, I'll go ahead and temper the blade for two one-hour cycles at 425. All right, now the heat treating is done. So, let's take a closer look at the hardening situation. Did the entire blade harden or just the edge? I'll go ahead and grind off the scale, then rub on a little ferric chloride to give it a sort of quickie etch. If I get a two-tone hamone-like effect, I'll suspect that this steel is a little marginal for oil quenching. On the other hand, if it hardens fully, then I'm good for oil quenching. So, after I've rubbed on the ferric chloride, I get this odd little pattern. Here along the spine, it's a darker color. So, is this a sort of hamone indicating that it hasn't hardened along the spine? Not sure just yet. So, I file test again just right here in this dark area. Peculiarly enough, it seems to be fully hardened both on the dark and the light areas. Huh. So, is it some kind of alloy banding effect or carbide segregation or what? I do not know. As Leonardo DiCaprio said in Django Unchained, you had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. So, if I had a Rockwell tester, I'd test the surface of the blade in several places and get a more accurate fix on the hardness. But, since I don't have one, I'm SOL on that. Bottom line here is, it appears to have hardened throughout the entire blade. So, I'll go ahead and sharpen the blade on my diamond stone. I actually learn a lot by finishing up the blade on the diamond stone. After years of doing this, I know what feels hard and what doesn't, and this feels quite hard to me. Actually harder than I would have expected given the heat treat I gave it. This is likely due to the chromium and vanadium carbides, but again, that's just a guess. Still, we've got another data point here. So the next thing that I'm going to do is what's known as the brass rod test. Basically what you're doing with the brass rod test is just rolling the blade up and down on a little piece of brass and it'll cause the edge either to flex or to chip. If the blade chips, you know that you haven't tempered it enough or there's something that's making it very fragile. In this case, it passes the test fine and we'll move on to the next thing. Now that I'm sharpened, I'll cut some rope. This will give me a general sense of how the edge holds up. 
if the edge dulls in a few strokes, you know you've got a combination of steel and heat treatment that won't make an effective knife. If it'll cut a thousand times and still shave hair, well, you've got something super special. This test is a little subjective, but again, we're just aiming for a general picture. It dulls reasonably quickly, but after concluding this test, I still have to say this steel's holding up pretty well. Now let's see how tough it is. Hardness is great, but without toughness, that is the ability to take shock without breaking, there are a lot of applications where this steel wouldn't be useful. And since I happen to be a sword maker and sword makers live in toughness world, I'm gonna have to test out its toughness. So first thing I'm gonna do is throw it at a tree, a bunch. Each time it goes in, I'll waggle it sideways and see if I can break the tip off. That test concluded successfully. The tip's not breaking off. That means we've got a reasonably tough piece of steel here. Now, I'll take it out to the driveway, throw it up in the air, and just let it land on the concrete. So, a little sidebar here. Is this science? No, it's not. Well, yes and no. What I'm doing here is not trying to get an exact picture of the steel, you know, in the sense that a professional metallurgist would. What I'm looking for is some rough information here about how this knife will hold up in real-world applications. Will it shatter? Will the tip crack off? Will it crack in some other way? Will the edge ding or will it chip? And those are two different things, by the way. Chipping's a problem. Dinging is not. So I'll do this, you know, about 50 times. Just throwing it up, letting it hit the concrete. And here's what it looks like when we're done. Again, the edge is held up pretty well. It's dinged, but as far as I can tell, it hasn't chipped. Now I'll put it in a post leg vise and try to bend it with a pipe wrench. This thing's not going anywhere. I just can't budge it. It's a fairly thick blade, so this is not unexpected. But what it shows is that it's reasonably well-tempered and it's reasonably tough. So what I've found out at this point is that this is a pretty solid knife, just with this kind of off-the-cuff heat treating process. So now I'm gonna go to a completely destructive test. I'll take the knife over to my chop saw, chop the knife in half, and give it a good ferric chloride edge. Again, I'm looking to see if it hardened all the way through. If it shows a different color in the center, then it hasn't hardened all the way. So here's what it looks like. You can see that it gets a little darker right here on the edge and I'm virtually certain that that's caused by the excessive heating of the friction from the chop saw. But the rest of it appears to be pretty much light colored 
except for this part at the spine, which corresponds with that dark part that etched earlier on the blade. And again, what that is, I really don't know. So that's about all the testing that I'm going to do at this point. Okay, so what did we learn? Nothing definitive. And that's kind of baked into the cookie here. We're not trying to do the sort of thing that a professional metallurgist would do, which is to isolate one single solitary metallurgical property and test for that exclusively. No single knife test of this sort can reveal anything more than just a snapshot of what a given steel is capable of. But a snapshot is sometimes quite useful. Here's what this snapshot tells us. This steel hardens when I use a pretty middle-of-the-road heat treating method, and that heat treatment results in a very durable blade. Fair enough. Good starting point. Also, we have this weird band at the top, which I can't explain definitely. Maybe important, maybe not. But, overall, this is already a blade that I'd feel pretty comfortable, you know, taking out into the jungle or, you know, having to rely on in tough circumstances. I mean, right now... I'd feel very secure about, say, making a camp knife out of it and heat treating it exactly the way I did here. Maybe it's not optimal, but it works okay. So this is actually a pretty darn good result, but it's only a starting point. So the question we have to ask now is what do we really intend to do with this steel? Do I want to make a through hardened medieval sword? Uh, differentially hardened Japanese style blade, maybe something with a bainitic spine and martensitic edge, a camp knife, a scalpel, you know, I have to have a general sense of what this steel might do and then what I'm aiming to do and that's going to condition the additional tests that I do. To me, the chemistry of this blade leans toward toughness. So it's in the realm of blades that would be good for swords and camp knives, and maybe we could coax a differentially hardened bainitic spine out of it. But without further testing, I just won't know. So if I want to pursue this steel further, I have to do more tests, slowly refining what works and what doesn't. And as I do, I'd want to do more specific and maybe more measurable tests than just, you know, chunking it at a tree. How many tests? I don't know. A lot, probably. I'd want to do fracture tests to see what kind of grain formation I'm getting. I'd want to vary my quench temps up and down a little, see how low I can go, and still get the blade to full hardness. Uh, try it at higher temperatures and see if that's going to result in excessively large grain formation. I might want to try mar quenching or os tempering or differential hardening. I might want to do fancier things like annealing before quenching, cryo-treating it, uh, and so on. Once you start adding variables, you can suddenly be talking about a geometrical increase in the number of tests you might want to do. It really depends on the application I'm aiming for and how nutso I want to get about wringing the most out of the steel. Bottom line, if you use little test blades like this, you can learn a lot of things and then move more quickly towards optimal heat treating for a particular application. And that's the real point here. So, what's the general lesson here? Heat treating is one of the core skills of the knife maker. For me, testing these little blades is the quickest route to tuning my heat treating techniques for a particular steel. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.